right, welcome back. Last July, do you remember that? It was warm and it was an unusual time for most of us to be watching the All-Ireland File at the height of summer. Wasn't that a bit strange? But it was beautiful too. But for one man, it was the perfect, perfect end to an incredible career. His beloved Kerry crowned champions once again. His two nephews playing an important part in that win there, of course. And what was to be his final ever day on the Sunday game. You'd forgive the man a bit of emotion. Would you welcome, please, the one and only Pat Spillane. Uh, Welcome aboard. Sorry, the bad news that this conversation will have to be all talk because I didn't bring my flute to play. Oh, right? oh, that's it. So there. No other instruments. None. Clarinet, anyway. cello. <laughs> uh, tell me, tell me about what happened when you were watching the Kerry Galway match and you were reflecting as the, uh, you know, the team were lifting the cup above their heads and so on. At what point did you feel something was? Different. You, you just got very emotional. If you didn't see it, Pat just was reflecting on his family and your father. And what happened? Well, I haven't watched it since, and you know, sometime during the winter I will watch it. You should. I, I think during COVID. Yes. Yeah. I think during COVID I realised, along with everyone else, realised that as a human I'm vulnerable, and I, I didn't. I, I started to reflect on lots of things on my own life, my past life, my future, my family, and I think. Over the last couple of years, I've started to get emotional. Now, I'll do my crying, but like all great Irishmen, I'll do my crying in private. Yeah. And, and the day of the all Ireland, Jesus, I saved my first public crying outing for the nation. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, it was a tsunami of emotion was released the minute the final whistle was blown. And it was a combination of a load of factors. One, it was my last day yeah. working on the Sunday game after 30 brilliant years. Mm -hmm. Secondly, my beloved Kerry had just won an all Ireland after eight years. Thirdly, my two nephews, yeah. Killian and Adrian, had won all Ireland medals. And fourthly, four lads from my little club, my small little club in Templeno, Shangri-La, four lads... Adrian Killian, Tyke Morley and Gavin won all Ireland medals. But the big thing was, Kerry Galway all Ireland final yeah. was something that was always in, within me. And in 1964, Kerry played Galway. And my father was a selector. And they stayed in the Gresham Hotel. They went for a walk on the Saturday night. And my father got a bad pain in the chest. And the fat man with him said, Tom, you better go to the doctor. We'll have to see you. And like all Irishmen, no, yeah. he wasn't going to the yeah. doctor. And if there's any message that comes out of my story, it's, look, Irishmen, if there is a problem, let's go to the... Anyway, he wouldn't go to the doctor because he had to be in the dugout the following day, selector for Kerry, Kerry playing Galway. On the Monday night, and I've pieced together all his story since, uh, Pete Hanley, great friend of ours, used to travel with him, he was the sub goal. he used to travel with him all summer, and he said, you know, Tom was always complaining about heartburn, and he was always taking rinnies. Obviously, Tom, my father, was, he was obviously in, in getting pain. On the Monday night, when they went back to his car, after coming down from Dublin, he got a bad pain in the chest again, leant against the wall, didn't drift. And on the Tuesday night, he died. Oh. And, and that, I think... Maybe I was eight years of age, and I don't think maybe... I'm just wondering, why did I get so emotional? Why did, because it, it was a huge significance. Uh, and, and what was huge was that my father never saw his sons play. And his sons, the three of us, won 19 All-Ireland medals. And now he had two of his grandsons winning two more. That's 21. And you start to say, wouldn't it have been lovely if he was alive uh, to see it? And, and, you know, I thought back on it, and I started to say... I don't know whether grieving is different nowadays, but as a youngster, he died. I was the eldest. I was eight. I can still remember the sounds in the corridor on the Tuesday night, the talking, and you knowing there's something wrong here. He's, he had a massive heart attack and he died. And I remember the day of his burial, and it's different probably nowadays, but the kids, the four Spillane kids, we were sent to our neighbours, the O'Shea's, and I can still remember, still remember vividly, standing at O'Shea's overlooked the church. And I'm standing on a rock in O'Shea's, looking at the funeral and listening to the funeral bells. And I think just everything came out. And you know, 
Do you know two things? Like I worked for 30 years on the Sunday game, and like people, I spoke for about four hours every year. That's about that's about the length of time and people decide you're this, you're that, you're a bollocks, you're anti this, you're anti this, you're yeah. hate this yeah. you're, and, and hatred is not in my thing and like people decide from watching you on television from the yeah. few minutes that you're this and for the first ever time when I left my guard down I think the first ever time people realised and they saw a different Pat Spillane and the Pat Spillane I hope they saw on television was a Pat Spillane who's proud to be a Kerry man proud to be from Temple Noor proud GA man but a proud family man. Mm. And, and do you know what? Like, since I retired, actually, this is a clue, do you know, this is a good thing. Since I retired, do you know, for 30 years I worked on the Sunday game, and for 30 years I was listening to the same old shite. Uh, he should be gone, O'Rourke should be gone, Brawley should be gone, Spillane should be yeah. gone, they're gone past it, they're a load of rubbish. And then when you announce your retirement, it's then they say, yeah. ah, you should stay on. <laughs> you try, <laughs> try that, it's I was very good. Say, try it sometime. Try it sometime. Yeah, well, give, give, me, give me a little while. And, uh, and the outpouring of emotion, yeah, yeah. And affection. Do you know, it, so, it, sounds, it sounds like you were eight years old. Uh, you were too young to grieve. Yeah. You, you described brilliantly uh, the Irish man's approach to crying, which is don't do it. And if you do it, don't let anyone yeah. see it. Do it. Um, and you waited many, many years. to. And, 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 and the way you described it, it's like you were watching it all happening. You described it beautifully, the four points of, of, uh, of uh, the way your brain was working. And it was like you missed your dad that day. I did. I did. Isn't that I strange? Did. And do you know what? The amount... Like, I have received hundreds upon hundreds of letters since the all Ireland mm. final day. A wonderful, and you start to saying, mm. like, why did somebody up in Ackle Island or somebody in Port Leash or somebody in Buncrana sit at a kitchen table for two hours to write a long letter? OK, let, let me ask you this. Did you, uh, after the Sunday game down through the more recent years, did you read the bullshit written about you online? Uh, no, do you know, I, I gave up the Sunday game for several reasons, uh, and like... No, but I, did you ever read the, the, the Yes, the I did, bad of stuff. course, yeah, okay. yes, and my family were reading. And that's, that's, that's bad stuff, okay, let me just yeah. make a point, and then I'll come back to you straight away, which is this. We had Michael Fatley on, we yeah. had Sue on. He right. was brilliant. He was great, and we had, so three, two different generations, and now you here. The lesson, and I was actually talking to the audience during the break, and they all agreed. The lesson is, there's a, a very loud, noisy, unpleasant attitude among some people when it comes to online. But the majority of people uh, are decent, I, good, uh, will write you a card, write yeah. you a letter. And, and that's the message that, that our guests tonight are saying. Don't be uh, I remember Billy Keane, John B. Keane's yes, son. Yeah, no, he, Billy, yeah. he, he gave me a great... I was talking about it. And now, social media wasn't bothering me. It was a niche. It was a little bit of a niche and it was starting to... But it wasn't anything major. It didn't drive me out. And Billy said to me, he said... And, he said, and I've... I've, I've kept it in my brain. Billy said, if somebody was giving out about you and hated you or was abusing you, would you invite them to your house for dinner? <laughs> you wouldn't. And he said, if somebody was abusing you and giving out to you, would you invite them into your head? You wouldn't. No. And I swear to God, uh, do you know what? Uh, I don't invite them into my head. And, and the outpouring of the, the cards, the letters, the mass cards. Yeah. Last Sunday, a man landed to the door. He drove from Killarney and he landed with a mass card for me. And he said, Pat, like, he wouldn't, I wouldn't know him from Adam. And he said, Pat, he said, this is just to thank you for your years playing with Kerry and all the enjoyment you gave us in the wow. game. And suddenly I realised, you know, there's a the majority, there's a silent majority in this That's country what I'm talking that about. we don't listen to, yeah. that don't use their voice. And, 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 and they're and, very kind. And the, oh, they're unbelievably yes. kind. And the amount of people that said to me after talking about my father, I don't know you, or I don't know you, didn't know your father, but I cried when you, talk, when you talked about yeah, your father. Yeah. The, it, it, it did hit a... But it was, it was just... Let me ask you about retirement. You are too hyper for retirement, and that is a compliment, um, because any time I meet you, you're yeah. a buzzer. Like, you're, you've always got the... So there's, there's, you, there's more to come, clearly. Look, I... I, I I haven't reached the end of the road. Well, I've of course just, you haven't. I've just reached a bend in the road, and That's I'm going better. to find. I like that. I'm going to find a road to go in another direction. Yeah. Uh, uh, I've been lucky in life. I was a teacher for 35 years. I played with football for Kerry Seniors for 17 years. I was in the Sunday game for 30 years, and in all those, I left of my own accord. No one was ever saying to me. You've stayed on too long. Never pushed. I, went to my, yeah. I was never pushed. Mm. So I closed the chapter on the Sunday game yeah. and I'd be opening another chapter. And by the way, I'm, I'm writing a book next year, all yeah, right? <laughs> yeah. OK. Well, that's we'll, the first. You come back and talk to yeah. us when that's published. But I will say, you know, we were talking to Israel, brilliant young athlete, yeah. uh, who, as you know, fastest man in Ireland, and uh, in Irish history, I should say, and his mom and his daughter are here. And equally, I was delighted to meet Rosario, your <laughs> wife and your daughters, and your family uh, earlier on. 
these are people successful in their fields, surrounded by the most important people in their lives, mostly women, as it happens. Uh, uh, but Rosario, I know you want to... The most important people in my life... And your mother, the, I should say. The rocks in my life yeah. have been my mother, yeah. my sister Margaret, my wife Rosario, the two girls. And uh, my mother, like my father died, I was eight, she, she was... She, we ran a bar, she ran a petrol pumps shop, uh, four kids, no widow's pension, couldn't drive, sold the car, and parked her life to rear the four kids and cooked the dinner at the kitchen table, uh, in the kitchen with the bar door to the bar open, never Amazing. took a day off, never went to, never saw us playing in her life. Never saw you play? No, never saw so us playing. You'd come back after winning an all our medal and uh, say, hi, mama, whatever, she'd say? Well, I'll tell you, there was two things about my mother. My mother didn't do affection. She was an Irish mother. She really sacrificed her life for us. She was a great, great woman, a woman of fate. I mean, we, if, if we didn't get drowned by holy water <laughs> heading to Nala in final, it would never, uh, and, the last thing when she... And we never spoke football. There was three of us playing with Kerry, playing in all Adams. We never discussed football. <laughs> the only thing she'd say to us when we reached the door, she, putting the holy water on our foreheads, putting the holy water on the bag, and all she'd say is, remember who we are. Yeah. Stay grounded. And I remember one year I came back after an all Adams final 84, and I should have come back on the Monday night, but we went on the beer and I didn't come back till Wednesday night. <laughs> uh, and, like, I had just won my, uh, I think, fifth all Ireland medal, and I had just been named man of the match and I arrived back into the kitchen at half past eight and my mother said get down inside the bar and start working really? and that was it there was no mention of well done congratulations whatever it is. Wow. And, and then like uh, Rosari took over uh, uh, and you know Rosari is, 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 is a look I, we're ma I married to Rosari 34 years we've known each other 36 years when I met Rosari she was engaged to be married not to me uh, uh, <laughs> And now you've just written yourself a bestseller. <laughs> on, a, on, a, on our first date, I met a lady who told me her daughter was singing at her wedding. <laughs> oh, jeez, this, this hill is getting steeper. Uh, 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 but a bit like Indiana Jones, whatever obstacles are in our way, we, we, get, we get to the golden. OK, uh, we, we, have to, we have to leave this story here because the time has run out. But like Indiana Jones hat, your story is the cave coming down here, the hat's there. You're not going to grab it yet because you're going to come back Look, with a book. I, I'd have to say one thing about Rosette because I, oh, I, go on, I, I, I swear to God. I want to hear it. As an Irish person, I'm not supposed to proclaim my love. You're not supposed to proclaim love for your wife. But I mean, I, I love her more now than I did when I met her 36 oh, years on. ago. Uh, and you know, uh, uh, and just one thing, Roy. This is beautiful. And, and like, uh, she, she, she I, she spies me. I've never cooked. I've never changed nappies. I don't know how to put on a dishwasher. And sometimes when she'd be cross, she'd say, and she never gets cross, she'd say, I only replaced your mother. But, but, oh. <laughs> uh, and, and, but, but finally, you know, our daughter Shona got married <coughs> two years ago. Congratulations. And, and, <clears throat> and, and we were talking about the secret and the success mm. of marriage and what makes it. And Rosalie said two things. Rosalie said, uh, if I hit her, she was gone. And if I had an affair, she'd be gone. And then Shona, our daughter, said, Dad, you couldn't have an affair because man would have to organise it for you. <laughs> <laughs> Pat Spillane, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> You're so mad. Oh, Lord, we could stay here all night now, I'll tell you what. Oh, that's fun. All right, Pat Spillane, we'll definitely see you back here again. OK. Um...